This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more. If you're interested in cars, there's a channel called Donut Media that you're probably already familiar with. As for me, I know very little about cars, but I do know my friend Anthony, who runs Donut Media's second channel called Real Mechanic Stuff, which is a channel where, you guessed it, real mechanics talk about stuff. Tony wanted to make a video about animals destroying cars, so he asked me to take a look at a bunch of viral clips and gave him a biologist perspective so that he could then show them to the mechanics and get their reactions. And then we decided to just make a video out of that as well, because we're YouTubers and that's what we do. <laughs> Let's just get right into it. All right, so right away, we're starting with uh, Homo sapiens. This is a, a very interesting animal that's kicking a car door. What a what a bizarre what's coming out of there? Oh, it's a bear. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's not great for the car owner. You know, I just I get excited about bears. I think they're pretty cool. So that looked like a brown bear. Brown bears are a lot less chill than like black bears are, so I appreciate this guy's caution. Brown bears and grizzly bears are actually the same species, called Ursus arctos. But grizzly bears are in a different subspecies called Ursus arctos horribilis, because they have several distinctive morphological and behavioral differences that make them significantly scarier. Unfortunately, even regular brown bears like this one, although they are usually less aggressive, can still be pretty unpredictable. These are the ones you aren't even supposed to try to fight off. If you're being attacked, you're just supposed to play dead. And only if that isn't working do you fight them back and then you give it absolutely everything you have. So all in all, I think this guy probably did the right thing by dealing with this the way he did. It's best to just try to keep your distance from animals like this whenever you can, especially in a situation where they might be scared or confused. Speaking of confused, how did that bear get in there in the first place? The world may never know. All right, so we got an old, weird looking sedan slash pickup thing. I don't know, with a massive hornet's nest in it. Wow. Oh my glob, look at all of them. They've been living in there for a minute. This car must have been there for a significant amount of time. And this is a nice safe spot for them to just sit there and build their nest. They can go out and scavenge and eat stuff and then come back here and make those amazing looking combs. Look at those guys. Oh, they're so cool. Okay, so I'm not an entomologist, but I am 99% sure that those are hornets. Wasp's nests just don't get that big. I'm also not sure what kind of hornets they are. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that they're probably either bald face hornets because they look black and white, or maybe European hornets because they're trying to take over a place that isn't theirs. It's so cool how you can see all those little white cap chambers there. Each of those contains a larva that's going through the process of developing into an adult. The life cycles of wasps and hornets is so fascinating because they all rely on the entire colony to survive. You see, the queen lays the eggs that develop into the larvae, and then the larvae scrape their mandibles against the sides of their little chambers, which send vibrational signals to the adults, signaling them to come and feed them by regurgitating food into their mouths like a bird mother. Then the larvae digest the food, and they secrete this super nutrient-rich fluid that the adults then come and slurp up. The adults don't have the equipment to digest their own food within their own bodies properly, so that fluid is like their main source of nutrition, and the larvae are like external stomachs for them. Once they're big enough, the larvae start producing silk from modified salivary glands in their mouths, and they use that to cap themselves into the chambers, making those little silk caps, and then inside the chamber, they go through the process of metamorphosis, to become adults, and then they are the ones that go out and build new nests and feed new babies, and the cycle continues. That's just nature, man. As beautiful as it is horrific. All right, they're pulling down a skid plate, and there's a possum inside. Yeah! Oh, I love possums. They're so great. Oh, no. Oh, poor guy. Oh, he's probably scared half to death. Look at him go. Oh, leave him alone. That poor little dude has been through enough. He built a whole nest up in that skid plate, and now he's in a shop, which means his whole house just got very hot and very loud and very shaky for a long time as it flew down the road, and now he's in this scary new place with people ripping his house apart. Poor little dude. Possums are great. They're one of my favorite animals. They're so cool, both evolutionarily and ecologically. Not only are they the only marsupial in North America, they're called the Delphus virginiana, with virginiana meaning Virginia, but really it's kind of a blanket term for just like an American animal. But then Delphus means two wombs. How cool is that? But also, they've been observed in captivity eating over 5,000 ticks a week. They're so good at eating ticks. Every day that you don't have Lyme disease, Thank a possum. And speaking of Lyme disease, they're immune to it. They can't contract it. And they're also immune to a bunch of other stuff as well, like rabies. 
Their body temperature is so low that the virus can't propagate, so it is extremely rare to find a possum with rabies. Another thing they're immune to is rattlesnake venom, because their blood naturally contains venom neutralizing peptides. They're just so freaking cool, dude. Overall, possums be awesomes. They're good little dudes, they do great things for us ecologically, and it is very difficult to be hurt by one, so please be kind to them. Guess who was in here? All right, challenge accepted. Got some chew damage going on. Somebody been gnawing through your stuff. So, some sort of thing in a tight little space, gnawing on things. Sounds like a rodent. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm looking at, dude. <laughs> Is it damaged? Probably. Oh, it's a beaver! Ah! Oh, that's great! Oh, look at them. Yeah, it's, it's uh, rodents, man. <laughs> that's, that's, this is what they're all about. Getting into little places and gnawing on things. That is what 99% of them are doing 99% of the time. As for beavers, they're a really cool example of what's called a keystone species, which is a species upon which an entire ecosystem depends. If you were to remove them from the ecosystem, then that ecosystem would either change dramatically or just collapse altogether. Case in point with the beavers, the dams that they build are not only a unique safe house to protect them from predators, but because of the way that they divert or completely stop water flow, they change the biological landscape and sometimes the actual geological landscape around them for miles. Things live and die as a direct result of that beaver's dam, because the flow of water is the flow of life. What kind of plants can grow downstream? What kind of animals can survive around those kinds of plants? Everything, both up and downstream from that dam, completely changes. They are the keystone of their ecosystem. And what's even cooler to think about is that that dam building behavior is instinctual. It's part of the beaver's DNA, part of what it means to be a beaver. So this is what we call an extended phenotype. An extended phenotype is a manifestation of the expression of genes that occurs outside of the organism that possesses those genes. So the dam that you're seeing is an expression of the beaver's DNA the same way that like its fur color and tail size would be. And when you remember the fact that evolution acts on phenotype, not genotype, you start to realize that that beaver's dam and the flow of water around the dam and all the other living things that rely on the flow of water around the dam for miles around, all of that is all part of the beaver's evolutionary story. And that is freaking awesome to think about. All right, we got some rams. Oh my glob, look at them go. So strong, so dumb. Don't drive through that. Yep, that's what happens. Their skulls are just super duper thick to protect from that kind of impact. They are tough creatures. Crazy part about this is they headbutt like that to battle for dominance. So even though the bumper was damaged, the car kept moving. So I think it won. Driving along. Oh my glob, why? Why right in front of the car? It's, it's a world around you. Oh, there's dogs chasing it, of course. Yeah, animals can be destructive, especially when they're scared but the moose was fine. The moose wasn't hurting anybody. Some of these crappy dogs are the problem. You left your gate open and your dogs got loose to go terrorize the natural world and now somebody else is paying the damages. Cruel world, man. Looks like a car. Looks like a lot of ants on the car. Oh, flip, dude. Look at all of them. You got an ant farm. Congratulations, you got a very, very expensive ant farm. Yeah, it looks like somebody left their sandwich in their car and then parked their car in a really inopportune place and then left that whole situation going on for a few days. Fun fact, those were all female ants, by the way. If you ever see a bunch of ants out and about, 99% of the time, they are going to be female ants because the female ants do all of the jobs in the colony. They're the workers and the builders and the defenders and the nursery workers and the everything else. The males have exactly one job in the colony and that is to fertilize eggs. That is all they do. All the rest of the jobs go to the females. And what's really cool is that sex determination in ants happens as a result of fertilization. And it's not the passing on of particular sex chromosomes, it is the fertilization of the egg itself that makes it a female. All female ants are diploid. They have two copies of their genome, just like you do. All male ants are haploid. They only have one copy of their genome. So if an egg gets fertilized and now has two copies, it will develop into a female. An unfertilized egg will just automatically develop into a male, and that's where male ants come from. 
And if you think about that for just a little while longer, you'll realize something really awesome. That means that male ants can never have sons. Because the second they fertilize an egg, it will be a female. They can have grandsons, because that female might become a queen that lays an egg that doesn't get fertilized, and then that would be a male ant. But they can never have male children, only male grandchildren. And that would be a rare event. How wild is that, dude? Oh, my glob. There's just a little... What is that, a quail? Just stuck up in your headlight thing? How... How did... See, this is why I make fun of diapsids so much, dude. They're all insane, and they're all stupid. And so they all do insanely stupid things and get into insanely stupid situations. Like, that's that's a closed container. It's more or less like a sealed thing. The only possible explanation I can think of for something like that is that someone went and caught that bird and then, like, meticulously, like, bolted them inside that light container. But, like, why? And how? And so many other things. This may seem like somewhat of a platitude, but it's really important to remember when watching clips like these that these animals didn't mean to harm anybody, or to cost you any money, or to mess up your car, or anything like that. They don't know what a car is, or what they're for, or why you have it, or what it takes to produce them, or repair them, or buy them. They, they don't have a concept of these things. We put our cars into their habitat, and they're just trying to deal with it. And I say that because we live in a society that is so separated from nature, or at least likes to pretend that it is, and that can make it really difficult to remember that we all have to share this planet, and that cannot just mean other animals living only where and how we want them to. That's just not fair. So even though situations like these are really expensive and really annoying, just please try to have some compassion and some understanding for the animals in these clips. You wouldn't punish a baby for hurting a car, because they don't understand what a car is, or what its value is, or any of that. And so, if you take nothing else away from this video, it's just, please try to think about wild animals the same way. And just to prove my point, I just went and found a clip showing that animals can actually help your car, and I'm gonna send it to Tony right now. The animal in the clip that I just sent over is known as Canis lupus familiaris. It's been around for about 15 to 30,000 years, and it is specially adapted for helping humans. Even mechanics! Check it out! Another day. I'm gonna finish up this exhaust manifold job today. Man, will you keep the light straight? Just point it at the engine block, would you? Come on. What a good dude, right? Thanks so much to all the good people over at Real Mechanics Stuff for having fun with all these videos with me. If you want to hear what actual professional mechanics think of everything we just watched, then head over to their channel and check out this video right here. And make sure to say hi to Tony in the comments for me. And with that, I'm Forrest Valkai. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and all the other stuff you do here on YouTube. Please exit through the gift shop on your way out, pick up one of these sweet t-shirts, have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Bye-bye! Now, a word from our sponsor. Brilliant is an everyday learning app that allows you to explore real math and science with fun, interactive lessons right in the palm of your hand. In just a few minutes a day, you can stretch your brain in brand new ways with lessons in data science, astrophysics, quantum computing, logic, and more. And the best part is they're offering my subscribers 30 days free plus 20% off an annual plan if you just go to brilliant.org slash forestbalkai. Brilliant is built for busy people, so if you're one of the countless people out there that wish you could learn some new stuff but feel like you just don't have the time, you now have the opportunity to expand your scientific thinking while sitting on the toilet. So what are you waiting for? Head over to brilliant.org slash forestvalkai, get started for free for 30 days, and if you like it, you get 20% off your annual plan. Thanks so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and thanks so much to you for watching it. See you later!